الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وكرة عيوننا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا We begin my dear brothers and sisters in faith and humanity my respected elders, we begin praising and thanking Allah, God Almighty, Allah, the one who creates and created all that exists. We praise and we thank Allah, the one who bewilders the human intellect. We thank and we praise Allah, the beloved of hearts, Man Mohan. We thank and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has blessed us with faith and surrender and this path of spiritual beauty. We bear witness that there is no creator, there is no object of our worship except the one true and living God. And that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, God bless him and grant him peace, is his servant and last prophet to all of humanity ending a long line of prophets and messengers that began with Adam, our father, the father of humanity, and continued throughout millennia through Abraham and Moses and Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. God bless and grant them all peace. Alayhim as-salatu wa salam ajma'in. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-aziz بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل الناس يقضوا فباعئ نفسه فمعتقها أو مبقها الله says God Almighty says in the Quran in the chapter of the Sun Successful is the one who purifies their soul. Successful is the one who purifies their ego. And destroyed is the one who neglects it. Prophet Muhammad, God bless him and grant him peace. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said in a sound hadith that every morning, every human awakes. And they sell their souls and either free and emancipate their soul or they leave their soul to destruction. The main theme that I wanted to share with you today, my beloveds, is the theme of the ascent of man, the ascent of woman, clearing the weeds that suffocate the garden of our hearts and planting seeds that ultimately blossom into trees that asluha thabit wa faru'uha fi sama trees in our hearts whose roots are firmly planted in the soil and whose branches reach out into the heavens the quran is a map of the human soul and a map of what is in the universe. مَا فَرَطْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah says, we left nothing out of the book. وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ And we have revealed this book to you, this scripture to you, as an explanation of all things. 
and the human soul is immense. And in this book of guidance, which is not only a book of law, it's not only a book of sacred history, it's not only a book that's to be recited and memorized, but it is a manual for the ascent of the human being to their highest potential. And in this surah, in Surah Al-Shams, Allah Ta'ala calls us to the highest vocation of every human, no matter what your profession is, no matter what your career is, no matter what your hobbies are. The question is, are you fulfilling your purpose with a soul that has been purified, with a soul that has been beautified, with a soul that has been notified, illuminated? So if you go with me to chapter 12, the chapter of Joseph, Yusuf, Joseph is well known. He's, his story is in the Bible, his story is in the Quran. And his story is an archetype and a similitude. It's a mathal for us. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, and our scholars, our glorious scholars, Allah be pleased with them, they defer as to who actually said this statement. Some say it was the wife of the governor of Egypt, Al-Aziz, and others say that it was Prophet Yusuf, Ali Salaam. But we're not, we don't have time to go into that today. Allah Ta'ala says, God Almighty says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ النَّفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةَ بِالسُّوءِ I do not declare my soul innocent. Indeed, the soul is oft commanding to evil. So this is where we begin in this journey of ascent. Generally, our scholars of the heart identify for three, some even say seven different rungs on this ladder of reaching our full potential as human beings. Because this is what Islam is. Islam is a path to live a full life, a happy life, a meaningful life, a significant life where you're contributing to your neighborhood, you're contributing to your borough, you're contributing to your municipality. You're contributing to your city, your country, to humanity. While your heart is connected to the celestial realms. Your feet, like the tree that we cited earlier, is firmly planted in the soil of this, of this world. The hustle and bustle of our daily lives. But like... Ibn Abbas, one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about one, uh, about the companions, he said, their hearts, their, their feet were planted on this earth while their hearts were in the akhirah. Their hearts were in the hereafter. You see, this is the, the, the inheritance of Prophet Adam. to live in this world while your consciousness is beyond this world. So this begins our journey into looking at the soul. This first soul, al nafs al-Amara, is known for its greed. It's known for its ostentation. It's showing off. All of the faults of the soul you see at this level Al-Bukhul, Al-Ujub, Al-Riya, Al-Kibr, Al-Hasad, Al-Ghadab, Bil-Batil, Arrogance, Conceit, Showing Off, Rage, Greed, Tama, Desire. The soul at this level is drowning in its own egocentricity, its own self-centeredness and selfishness. The human being, when they're at this soul, they say they're tuned to, there's a particular radio station called WIIFM, What's In It For Me? That's the frequency they're tuned to. What's in it for me? I'm not interested 
if there's no dividend, there's nothing coming back to me, I don't get some kind of perk, some kind of benefit. But God is calling us to something higher. God is calling us to worship and serve him, liberated, emancipated from fear and desire-based worship. And, to, and so that we worship him out of love. This is what Sayyidina Hussein, the son of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with them both, said. He said, the person who worships God out of fear worships God like a despicable slave. And the person who worships God out of desire for reward worships God like a businessman, like a businesswoman, like a merchant. I fast, what are you going to give me? What come, how many hasanats? I pray, I, I give charity, I, I fast, I pray, what am I going to get? If I don't get something back, Allah, I'm not interested. But he said, the one who worships God out of gratitude, out of thankfulness for the gift of life, out of thankfulness for faith, out of thankfulness for being chosen for the community of Prophet Muhammad a community that prophets yearned to be a part of. The person who worships God, Allah, for this reason, he said, that's the worship of the one who is free because most human beings wake up in the morning and what motivates them is fear and desire. Either fear and desire of what's in this world or fear and desire for what's in the next. So the nafs al-amara is the lowest level. This is when the human is really an animal dressed in, in human flesh. But that's not where God leaves us. There's, there are other levels beyond. The next level is called nafs al-lawama. This is the next rung on the ladder of ascent to realizing our true humanity. And nafs lawama is the soul that blames itself. See, now the conscience awakens. Now, if the person slips or trips or hurts someone or does something that's unbefitting of our calling as a human, they say, I shouldn't have done that. Something inside them drives them to remorse, to regret, to repentance. A tawbah to nadam. The Prophet Sallallahu said, repentance, its essence is remorse, regret. Not guilt. We're not into guilt, but we are into regret. And this stage of the soul is so great that God swears by it. And I swear by the soul that reproaches itself. And anything that Allah swears by is azim. It's great. This soul has now begun to ascend. And our scholars say that most human beings begin at this level. When you're born, when you reach two, three years old, this is where you are. And based on your environment, based on nature and nurture, you either go up or you go down. And we seek refuge in Allah from going down. And in the remaining part of the khutbah, I will just touch briefly on the last levels. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu wa safiyuhu wa khaliluhu. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-aziz ba da'udhu billahi min ashaytani rajim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa kullu qawlan sadida. Yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yakfil lakum dhunubakum. Wa man yuti'i allaha ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. O you who believe, be mindful of God and speak truthfully. If you do this, God will forgive all of your sins and rectify your circumstances. Indeed, the one who obeys God and His Messenger has attained immense success. So to continue, the person who's preoccupied with stealing and killing and hating 
others is at this lowest level we talked about, the nafs al-amara. And then when, with purification, with spiritual exercise, we go into the spiritual gym. A lot of us go to the physical gym and we work out our muscles. We do anaerobic and aerobic exercise. We put ourselves through torture so that we can be healthy. Some of us do it so that we can look good, so the clothes fit right. But when you go to the, to the physical gym, whether it's at a fitness center or in your home, don't neglect the spiritual gym so that your heart and your soul is not preoccupied with anger and with lust and fulfilling our sexual urges with rage, with resentment. This is the nafs al-amara, the first level. And then the second level, which is a great level, but the journey's not over. The nafs al-awama, the nafs that reproaches itself, that blames itself, the consciousness of the human being has begun to awake. And then with continued spiritual exercise, listening to spiritual teachings and the, and the grace of Allah, the rahmah of Allah, a person ascends to the next level, which our scholars call al nafs al-mulhima. Allah alludes to it in the Surah to Shams that we recited from earlier. Allah says, after making 11 oaths, nowhere else in the Quran do we see this. It's a litany of 11 oaths made by God. He swears by the sun and by the moon and by the day and by the night, by the heavens and by the earth and by the resplendence of the sun and the glory of the day and the, and the, and the spreading of the earth, the covering of the night. And then God swears by the human soul. When nafsi wa ma sawaha fa'alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha and we the, and we swear, God swears by the human soul, the consciousness, the consciousness, the personality of the human being who, and the one who created it and inspires it with knowledge of wrong and right. This is a beautiful level because now the person knows what's wrong and right, not because they read it in a book, not because they heard it in the dars, but it's, it's inspired. It's intuitive. But the journey's not over. If you go with me from the chapter of the sun to the chapter of the dawn, Surah Al-Fajr, Allah Ta'ala then mentions the latter in the higher stages of our growth, our blossoming into awareness, our blossoming into consciousness, the deepening of our iman, of our faith. Allah mentions, Ya ayyuhatun nafsul mutsma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadih wadkhuli jannati. The fourth rung on this ladder is the serene soul, the tranquil soul. The soul now that God, Allah, addresses directly. And I know many of the times we read this ayat that we think that they only refer to the day of judgment, to paradise after we die. But my dear beloveds, ya habibi, this Quran, this remindance, this recitation, this unifying revelation that God has given us has an inward and outward reality. And a hadith that has a, a sound chain of transmission the Prophet وسلم, is reported to have said, Inna hadha al-Qur'an, inna li hadha al-Qur'an, batnan wa dhahran wa haddan wa matla'an. Indeed, this Qur'an has an inward reality, an outward reality. It has a boundary and it has a point of ascension. So the inner reality of this is that this is not just something that happens after you die, but those of us who have the blessing of purification, may experience it in this life. Ya ayyuhatu nafsa mutma'ina, O serene soul, return to your divine nurturer. And then Allah mentions the fifth level of the soul in its ascent, pleased with God, an nafs al -mardiyya. This is the soul that's pleased with God's decree, whether it's bitter or sweet, whether their life is, is hard or, or easy, whether they are in health or sickness, whether they are rich or poor. They're pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not discontent. 
And because God has blessed them to reach this level, and it's at this level the people start to see the beauty in everything. They have love for everyone. What do you mean love for everyone? Prophet Muhammad sallam, said in another hadith that has a Hassan chain, a good chain, he said, Afdulul Imam nas." That the best action after faith in God is to show loving kindness towards all human beings. At-tawadud ila nas, al-mawadda. And then because we're pleased with God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises us to this next level through his permission, al-mardiyah, the soul that God is pleased with. This is the sixth level, al-nafs al-mardiyah. And this level is where, is the last of the stages of iman, our scholars say. And the last level, and here we will end is so refined, it's so transparent, it's so subtle that Allah doesn't even describe it with an adjective or, or, with a, or attribute to it a verb as he did with all of the other six levels. Fadkhuli fi ibadi, enter amongst my slaves, my bondsmen and women, my servants. Wadkhuli jannati, enter my paradise. Not Jannah al Naim or Jannah al Ma'wa, my paradise. This is the soul that has reached its full potential. This is the soul that's not attached to this world, but's fully active in the world and bringing love and serving and building civilization, building society for the benefit of all human beings. And we ask that Allah Ta'ala give us the blessing of rising to the fullness of who we are as the children of Adam and Eve. Peace and blessings be upon them. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma gfili al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat. Wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat. Al-Ahyai minhum wa al-Amwat. Allahumma al-Izi al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma faqihna fi din wa alimna ta'wil. Allahumma ahsin aqibatana fi al-umuri kuliha wa ajirna min khizi al-dunya wa adhab al-akhirah. Allahumma tub alayna inna ka tatawab rahim Oh Allah, we ask that you bless all those who have gathered here. Ya Allah, we ask for the forgiveness of sins. We ask for your grace. We ask for knowledge. We ask for health. We ask for wealth that does not distract us from you. We ask for the purification and the illumination and the beautification of our spirits. We ask for safety and security for all of humanity, Ya Rabbal Alameen. إن الله يعمل بالعلي والإسان ويتايد القربة وينها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون.